Hello procrastinators and welcome to something new. Yes, new things. Scary, but fun. Um, I like doing new things. I get bored if I'm doing the same things over and over again. So throw in new things and see what happens. Uh, also, the because the other new thing I was doing, I was trying to do complete stuff. But I, I don't like my completes. I don't think my completes videos are my best videos. So that's gone. That's dead forever. I don't like completing games. If you want to see a game completed, go elsewhere. I'm not going to be using this channel for completing games anymore. It didn't really work out for me. Uh, instead, I want to do something that's a bit discussion-y, a bit talky, and a bit different. Don't worry, uh, this is always going to be an extra video, so this will be sort of the eighth video on the week uh, on this channel. Uh, Free Game Friday will be up in about an hour or so like normal, so no need to worry about that. Just kind of want to try, sort of... <sighs> the thing that happened was I've accidentally got power in the game industry. I don't know how this happened, this happened accidentally, but I was I was making stupid videos on YouTube, and now I can get games greenlit, which is terrifying. <laughs> seriously scary and seriously pressure, and I kind of want to use this power for good, and not evil, and that's sort of, I, I kind of, I've been really thinking about what I kind of want to do with this channel, and so I kind of, I want to promote great games, that's one thing I want to do. I also want to start making games, I'm working on that, there's more details of that coming later, I, I really do want to sort of get into that. Um, but the other thing, I kind of want to start actual discussion and debate, and <laughs> there's there's two sets of discussion and debate, really, on the internet at the moment. There is the comment sections, where we do not tread, where everybody just calls each other rude words and nothing happens, and then there's the intelligent debate, which is a little bit beyond quite a lot of people, where people are talking about things, they're like, oh, the themes were different in this, and so I couldn't enjoy it. What are your things with Anthropus? Um, so... I kind of want a middle ground. I kind of want the not particularly intelligent, semi-intelligent debate. That's what I sort of want to go for here. Semi-intelligent debate. No idea if this is going to work. Shall we get started? I think we shall. So, Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V, I have called uh, my favourite game of all time. I'm not sure of all time yet. At the moment, it's my favourite game. Things tend to die down and move around a bit. For the moment, it is my favourite game I've ever played. May change if I go other stuff. Don't know yet. But it is my favourite game I've ever played. The score I would give it, if I wrote a review for it, would be 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 is the score I would give Grand Theft Auto V. Yes, it's my favourite game, but no, it's not perfect. There are massive problems with GTA V. H happily, the overall is good enough for me to kind of ignore quite a lot of the problems with it. But if I was writing a score for it, I would take everything, I would weigh it depending on what I consider more important and less important, so I focus on gameplay over everything else, and then I would give it a score based on absolutely everything. Not an overall, how did I feel at the end of it, just every single individual little bit score. So I would give it an 8 out of 10. It's still one of my all-time favorite games, but I would give it an 8 out of 10. This is the way I review games. This is the way I would review games. I don't, because I think review scores are bullshit for this reason. Because a lot of you are there going, oh, you, what are you thinking? Because I've, I've always said there is only one game I've ever played and considered perfect, and that was the original Portal. Portal was the only game I would ever give a 10 out of 10 for, because if I listed everything, I'd go, yeah, it's all brilliant. Even the length. The biggest issue a lot of people have with Portal was the length. People go, it's too short. No, it's perfect. Portal is the perfect length. It just gets you just wanting more, and then it finishes satisfyingly. It is the perfect length. I think Portal is a perfect game. GTA V is not a perfect game. I prefer to play GTA V, but that's just because that's who I am. The individuals of it is an 8 out of 10. And you may be going, no, the score should be the overall. The score should be how you feel at the end of it. And that is the point I am trying to make. Review scores aren't standardised. Which means there isn't an average, there isn't a way that everybody collects their review scores. Everyone collects their review scores in different ways. Which doesn't work at all. There is no need for these numbers if everybody is giving them for different reasons. Otherwise, what's unless you're just reviewing one person's opinions on everything, but then you'd be comparing just their reviews of the games they review. Otherwise, I mean, if IGN gave it a 10 and someone else gave it a 9, you'd be there going, oh, well, that they were wrong because they gave it a 10. Well, they might just be ranking it differently. IGN give out 10s like uh, communion wafers in church. If they just uh, take them. Fuck, we got millions. Um, but other things like PC Gamer never give out 100% scores. Never. They don't. The highest they've ever gone to, I think, is a 9.6 for Half-Life 2. Possibly Minecraft recently got that as well. I think a few other games as well. But no, they, they do more of my sort of thing. They say no game has ever been perfect, so they haven't given out a perfect score. So comparing review scores, completely pointless exercise. There's no need to do it. There is no sort of anything there. It, nothing. 
It's, there's no, it's chalk and cheese and bricks and fish and cocaine. There is no need to compare these things. They're, everybody is playing a different game. It's like playing a game of football and one team's trying to score goals by getting a thing and the other team's trying to hit the crossbar. Uh, it, it just, you, you know, well, we scored 20 crossbar points. Yeah, but we scored three goals. We win. Yeah, by your rules. It's, it's confusing and messy and so is that metaphor. But let's go with it because I'm not stopping. Uh, <laughs> I'm holding a pen like a baton. You, don't, you can't ever see that, but I'm wisping it around. I feel like I'm talking. Uh, yes, so, so having these sort of different people's opinions with different systems for marking means that you can't compare any review scores ever. So there is no point to them, unless you're just reading that review compared to, that person's reviews compared to all the other person's reviews. So why the fuck does Metacritic exist? Now, Metacritic is the messiest, worst website for gaming I have ever come across because Metacritic takes all of these scores, all of these scores, and then weighs them in a way that they think is more important. So they take the people that they think have the better opinions and give them sort of a higher ranking and then push down people who don't have better opinions. So you're now on, with Metacritic, you're on like three steps away from logic. So Metacritic is sort of a score based on an opinion that's played in different rules every single time, that is weighed by other people. Metacritic is three steps away from any good reasoning for Metacritic existing. Uh, why? Why do we need Metacritic? Why do you go to Metacritic and go, ah, oh, no, this game, look, it's got a terrible score. Well, that's only because the, like, the three people who didn't like it were much higher rating than the 20 people who did like it. But I've seen the, the Beyond Two Souls reviews which just came out, and the ones that the people that I sort of go to have been genuinely quite negative about it. They've just said, it's a movie, and it's... Pfft. So they've given it quite bad scores, and then you go to the Metacritic, and it's got a 7, like a 7 out of 10, which is a great score. That's that's pretty fine. So, is, it, is this different? And then I looked at all the scores, and I sort of went like, well, no, if you take all the averages of this, it's a lot lower than what you've done. So, uh, Metacritic is useless. I, I, don't, I don't think we should talk to Metacritic anymore. The worst thing about Metacritic is when people don't get paid. Like, was it Fallout New Vegas? The people who made Fallout New Ve Vegas got no royalties, no bonuses. They just got a flat pay unless the game got an 85 on Metacritic. That is basing someone's wage on someone's opinion in a random sort of set of rules they made up and then somebody else's opinion of how much that opinion matters. And that is what they base their wage on? That is so far from any scientific method whatsoever. It's complete pointless. And if you don't know, Fallout New Vegas uh, got an 84. One point. One point off of getting these bonuses. The most fucked up thing in the game industry. That story made me so live. I tweeted hard. Oh, I tweeted hard when that story came out. But let's okay. Let's 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 roll. Let's go. Let's go slightly back. Let's go slightly back to. Why review scores exist. Review scores exist for page hits. Review scores exist because people just want to see a number. They don't want to see words. People don't give a shit about words. They don't want to see why the person came to this conclusion. If the person, if you ever read why the person came to that conclusion, you'd understand their score. So let's go back to GTA 5 for an example. Uh, the Escapist gave it a 7 out of 10. With 99% of the people who read that calling for the heads of everybody involved in that review. Incidentally, all the people calling for the heads hadn't actually played the game at that point, so had no idea how good or bad it was. But in the review, the guy said that playing as a psychopath isn't fun. I massively disagree. I believe that playing as a psychopath is fantastic fun. So I read that and went, oh, that's a massively positive review. That is essentially a 10, because his only problems were, you play as psychopaths that have no redemption. I'm like, I like playing as psychopaths. And no I am essentially a psychopath with no redeeming features. So... For me, that was a ten. I read that review. The score was pointless because the guy had come to a conclusion and then added a score that isn't right. Because if when I read his review, I read that review as a massive recommendation, as a complete perfect score. Because the only problems he had with it weren't problems that I have. It, big issues here. Do you see these big issues we're having? Also, the other one. Now, this fucking other fucking fucking you fucking people fucking with the GameSpot review. The fucking GameSpot review. If you don't know this story, GameSpot gave GTA 5 a uh, 9 out of 10, I believe it was. A 9 out of 10. Now, I only gave it an 8 out of 10, because I think there's enough problems to knock off two points. But they gave it a 9 out of 10. A 9 out of 10 is a fucking incredible score. If something is like 9 tenths, like, good, that's, that's not even great. That is fantastic. That is at the very top of everything. The death 
threats that the woman who wrote that got. Just fucking mental from people who hadn't played the game. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Because the, the, the main thrust of it, the main problem, was that people said... The, uh, sorry, not people said, the reviewer said that the game is slightly misogynistic and politically muddled. You know what? It is incredibly misogynistic and politically muddled. There are no women in GTA 5, and the only women that are in there are tit vending machines or one dimensional characters. I had huge issues with that sort of side of GTA, and that's a, that's a correct thing to come to. You, I, I was playing GTA going, I'm actually quite uncomfortable with some of the things you're saying. The, there's quite a lot of. Bad things you're saying about women here, Rockstar. I'm not fond of a lot of this stuff. And so I took a... I just take points off, I weigh that, and that sort of thing. But just, you haven't played the game. This person has played the game. This person correctly said that the game is quite misogynistic. And that deserves that person to be fired. Because everybody in the comment section decided to start a petition to get that person fired. I want to know what's going on in the mind of commentators. I think that's what I'm coming to here. How can you be so stupid to think that 9 out of 10 is a bad score? Seriously. It, because if you consider a 10 out of 10 to be like the only score you would accept, then you would only accept perfection. But it's not anymore, because 10 out of 10 is essentially the average, proven by the fact that fucking Yahoo Games gave Arkham City 6 out of 5, or 11 out of 10, or some bollocks like that. So, oh, this game's better than perfect, is it? That's that's just the failing of your review system, to be perfectly honest. But that's the sort of shit that happens when you listen to twat monkeys who think that every game with a budget should get a 10 out of 10. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit angry now. <laughs> Free game Friday in an hour. Um, uh, all this negativity and all this... Imagine if it didn't have a review score. Okay, imagine if the game didn't have a score. These, this review didn't have a score at the end of it. The GameSpot review, which is massively positive, apart from those two points. Imagine if it didn't have a review score. What would the comment section been now? It would have been, oh, this game was being great. Actually, I'm here just to quickly take this into a point. I'm assuming that everyone in the comment section is literate. Uh, I have been proven wrong by that in the past, but I'm assuming that they have actually the capacity to read the review. Just take that into note. I, I assume instead of the death threats, the hate, the petition to get the person fired... It would have been lovely. They would have gone, oh, this game sounds brilliant. It's going to be great. Oh, it's a bit politically muddled, but I'm far too fucking stupid to realise that. And, um, <laughs> oops, broad strokes, broad strokes. Uh, yeah, I, 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 my train of thought just derailed. Uh, <laughs> this will happen. I decided to do these unedited because if you do them edited, I'll then have to write them and script them and research them. And I, I like, I prefer my flow. I'm essentially a rapper, but the opposite. Um, so, yeah, I assume the comments would have been good on that review because it's a great review. The only thing that got people pissed off in that review was the number at the end. It wasn't... And it's a fucking nine, you cretins! But it, it's not the content of the review anymore. So here is my solution. Here's my solution to Metacritic bollocks, to, to shitty review scores, to all of this crap. All review scores in general. I want every reviewer to give every single game a 1 out of 10. Just give them a blanket 1 out of 10 to everything that comes out now. Fuck Metacritic over, kill this thing off, and then eventually, eventually people will stop looking at the numbers and maybe start reading that. Or they would have killed themselves off trying to type something, the brain would have exploded due to their immense stupidity of thinking that 9 out of 10 is a low score for something. It's a fucking A star in your GCSEs. It's more than A star, I think A stars are only 80% now. So there you go. That was the first slightly ranty soapbox. I think I hit all the points I wanted to hit. Essentially, review scores are bullshit, and people in the comment section deserve to have very painful lobotomies. Uh, now, to the comment section and discuss whether you agree with me or not. Thanks for watching Progress. Now, hit us. See what happens. Ta ra.